What's up, racers? It's Ren from Black Magic Suspension. Are you struggling at the racetrack? Well, you have tuned in to the right channel. We're going to have probably 10 episodes of us going through Vaughn Casey's car and showing you all the adjustments that I'm going to make to make this car go faster. When I first started on a race car, I looked for anything that might be binding up or hindering the performance of the race car. Well, we've already started a little bit on this one. Right off the bat, you can see the right front geometry's got some problems. The bird cage has got some problems. So this is just stuff you can measure with a tape measure, any time of, of angle finder, that'll be a good start to getting the race car where you want it to be. Do you know what the most important thing is about your race car? It's not your race car. It's not your setup. It's not your shocks, it's not your springs, it's not your tires. It's what I'm holding in my hand. Knowing where your race car is sitting. We're gonna do this one statically. I'm gonna measure everything from upper control arm angles, lower control arm angles. I'm gonna check spindles, I'm gonna check spring heights, I'm gonna check everything on this race car and we're gonna write it down. And it's gonna be sitting in a static position, okay? Now, if we need to get back to that position, I will have it written down. If you call me on the cell phone and I, you, you call me and say, hey man, I'm tight. Well, I'm gonna ask you some series of questions. If you don't know them questions, I can't help you. So that's where we're gonna start at and we're gonna get started now. All right, guys, I've checked this thing for cracks, for rubs, for binds. I couldn't find a whole lot. So I go to the right front, that's where I started. First thing I wanna do, I wanna know where this car is sitting at in static. So I take a lot of measurements, okay? I check the upper control arm angle, front to back. I check the upper control arm from the inside of the car to the outside of the car. I check the lower control arm angle. Then I also measure my spring. This will be very important later on when I go to my smasher, I'll know how much load is on this spring. But I also measure bolt to bolt. And this will be important when I get into dynamic posture, I will know how far this car can travel before something hits. And I also marked here and here because this is where it is now. That doesn't mean that it's gonna be there when we get done, that just means that's where we're at now. But when I get in dynamic posture, I will see how far I can travel before something hits and that's where we'll put our stopping point. Now we're gonna to move to the right rear. We almost made it to the right rear. Remember me telling you you need to write stuff down? Well, when you write stuff down, you start seeing numbers that just don't match, okay? Take a look at this right front upper. As you can see, it's running downhill from the back to the front. That's not a good thing. Because when this upper runs uphill, it's gonna to run toward this way. You see what I'm saying? It's gonna run over this way. So we're gonna have a caster loss. Well, this is not good. All right, when this car is rolling over, the front bolt is going down and the back bolt to that upper control arm is going up. Well, you're, now you've got a caster loss in the front of your race car. Well, this right here is definitely not helping it. So we're gonna label this as a 10 problem. One out of 10, this is a problem. So now we're gonna to move to the right rear. As I'm working my way to the right rear, I also wanna get the angle of the frame and make sure nothing is kinda of gimped up there. So you can see we're two degrees from back to front, running downhill to the front. It's just a reference point. That doesn't mean it's gonna be there when we get done, but it's just a reference point. Remember that. Now that we've got to the right rear, I've measured it a lot like the right front. Tried to find as many places to measure to for our static placement. And there's two things that's good about this. If you wreck your race car, you can always put it back. So as the car come in, you can see I measured upper bar length, upper bar angle, lower bar length, lower bar angle. My shock center to center as it's mounted on the car, my spring height from when we go to the spring smasher. We've done the birdcage indexing which we use this tool. 
that mounts onto the birdcage. Use your bolts. And we come up with one degree top is forward. So it's advanced a little bit with the top being forward. Okay, the shock angle is 15 degrees with the top going inboard towards the, towards the car. The axle tube to the underslung is just for reference was two and three quarters. Underslung the bell is 10 and a quarter. Note, both right side bars are angled toward the driver. And you can see we measured our birdcage, where our mounting points are on the birdcage from center to the bolts. And for references only, we put where the shock mounts to the birdcage to the center. This will all be affected by timing. And this doesn't mean we're going to be here when we're done, but this is just our reference as of right now. Now we're on the fifth coil and I'm measuring from the center of the axle tube to where the shock bolts onto the fifth arm. What that will determine is the shock and the spring that we will use on this combination. Now, I've only got a couple of holes. This one's a little bit further than I would like to see, so I'll probably move it back a hole and I have to move it at the top, but we will get to that later. Right now, we're gonna measure, just get references of spring pressures and eye to eyes. As you can see, the sixth coil's got a little pressure on it. That means we've got some load in our fifth coil. So we're also gonna check the center to center on this one so we can test the spring and make sure the spring is good too once we take it off. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm moving around to the pinion angle, as you can see. We've got 9.15 on the pinion angle. Now that we've got everything measured on the car, Vaughn said something about showing you how to measure stuff. How I measure stuff may not be your way of measuring stuff, but it's my way, okay? But I use this tool on the birdcage to show me the angle of my birdcage. When we're talking about measurements from the center to the bolts, we're measuring from the center of the axle tube to the bolts, okay? Separation of the bolts, how far apart, all this is crucial to the timing of this birdcage because the spring is attached here. So as the car ro rolls into the corner, it'll turn this birdcage. So if you've got it advanced or disadvanced, it's gonna change the timing. Our numbers now, does it mean anything? Not much, but it's a good reference. Once we start setting this car up, we'll have an angle in the car, and what I will try to achieve will be 12 and six at the right height that I'm trying to achieve, okay? Also, when I'm talking about your four length rods, when I'm talking about measurement, when I show you these measurements, it will be from center to center of the eyelets, okay? The angle will obviously be at a static angle with just a simple angle finder on it. Uh, your J-bar, when I measure the J-bar, I measure from the ground to this bolt and the ground to this bolt, center to center, here to there. The reason I measure that, it doesn't matter what chassis you have. A lot of chassis manufacturers want you to measure the J-bar from the frame up. Well, they could be all different. So for future reference for me, I've always measured from the ground and got my separation that way. Yep. When I refer to measuring the spring, I'm measuring on the flat side of this spring while it's sitting in here in the floor. When I get the static height, when I move to the smasher, I'll be able to take it to the smasher and get an accurate measurement from flat to flat. That will tell me how much weight is on this spring. All right, guys, we're back to the right front after we lowered the droop just a little bit in the left rear. We were over drooping. How we know that? Trusty notebook. We know we're going to travel about four, four and a half inches here. Well, we're traveling six, six and a half, seven back there. That's not good. When you're coming down the straightaway, if that left rear over droops, it's going to be dominating the left rear. That's not good. We don't want the left rear dominating because then you're going to be turning left as you come down the straightaway. We don't want it overpowering the rest of the car. So we took a, just a hair bit out. And remember, everything that we're doing, we're neutraling this car so he can go to the racetrack and start making adjustments to make it better. 
So we want to put everything at neutral or a, 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 just a decent place on the race car. The reason I come back to the right front is because we got some problems. We have our problems, why? Because remember all the measurements we took? Okay, now if you remember, this spindle was at four degrees static, which is typically what most manufacturers tell you to put it at. Well, that's good, we're at four degrees static. But do you remember this level sitting up here? When this car got down in a dynamic position, we lost four degrees downhill. Well, this upper control arm is bolted to the frame. So now we're at four degrees, static. We go into dynamic, guess what happens? Four degrees loss. Now we're standing straight up and down. Okay, double trouble. When I'm looking at our notebook, you know, we've got all of our spindle. We got just tons of information on the right front. We got everything measured. This upper control arm was actually angled downhill to the front. The front bolt was lower than the, than the back bolt. Well, that tells me when the spindle rises up, it's going to take the top ball joint, it's gonna to go toward the front of the car. Well, what happens now? Well, we're now we're at zero because we lost four. Well, now when we go into travel, the top of the spindle goes this way. So whenever we was actually in dynamic posture, when he was on the racetrack, this spindle is actually leaned forward. So we have negative caster in the car. This is not good. Reason it's not good is whenever this spindle has a, the spindle has a snout, okay? Here, if you've got caster in the car, it, it rotates just like this. And you can see the spindle snout going into the, into the track. You can see the spindle snout going away from the racetrack. Well, that adds weight and takes away weight. Well, with the spindle going the wrong way, like this, Guess what happens? Let's say he was free coming off the turn. He backsteered, what happened? It took weight away from him, okay? So it took weight away from the left rear. It wasn't helping him. All right, let's say, let's say he is tight. Now what's happening when he turns to the left because he's tight? Well, obviously when you're tight and you turn left and the spindle goes into the ground because the frame is welded together, it pushes down the left rear so you're gonna get tighter. This is not a good scenario. So, whenever I put this thing together, I started messing with the caster at dynamic and taking this spindle and rotating it back and forth. And I looked for a good number of how much this spindle actually goes into the ground. Depending on inclination, it can change that. So, let's say, I know we've all heard it. Some race cars steer better than other ones. Some of them are really good in the mud, some of them are really good in the slick. Well, think about it. Depending on where the caster is and how this thing rotates into the ground, it's gonna make that car feel different. So you can start tuning your car however you want to, but the main thing is you want this, this spindle to have caster in it when you're on the racetrack. Nice. Okay, now that I've showed you how to I measure stuff on the car to get a basic setting as the car rolled in. And I have identified some problems with nothing more than a tape measure and an angle finder, okay? This is where we're gonna get very interesting for part two. We're gonna put this thing on a set of scales. We're gonna get some scale numbers. I bet we find more problems. After we get it off of the scales, I'm gonna put it on the Hammond plates. And I'm gonna go back to measuring some more, some casters, some camber, start putting some things in movement, pull the shocks and springs off of it, start checking the loads and the shocks to see what other problems we can find. Because I bet when we get done, we're gonna have a huge list of problems. But the only way to do that is to get in here and do the work. Remember that pen and that piece of paper because that is the most important thing about your race car, is knowing everything about it. Pretty good.